Here's a bit of motoring history. We'd been relying on this stuff for, what, 130 years? It's been a really good friend. But the trouble is, it's changing the climate, costing us an absolute fortune, and sooner or later, it's gonna run out. Something has to change. Things are changing. In this corner of London, people who can make a difference are discussing a revolution, the low carbon transport revolution and how to speed it up. This isn't just some talking shop. When you see the world's motor and energy industries looking at new, better and cleaner ways of powering vehicles, re-examining how and why we move around and spending big money to do it, you know they're serious. It's about bringing business and government together in order to produce really effective solutions. Low CVP does that really well in helping government to design good policies and programmes that really make a difference. Transport accounts for about a quarter of emissions from fuel consumption. About 15. The Low Carbon Vehicle Partnership, or Low CVP, is an organisation which works to push along the shift to low carbon vehicles and clean alternative fuels as well as helping UK businesses to benefit from the changes. It provides a forum for government, the motor and oil industries and the public to discuss practical steps to accelerate the take-up of cleaner vehicles and fuels that will protect the environment. Take electric vehicles, for example. If you think they're all golf buggies and milk floats, you better come and have a look at this. Electric cars are just one type of a new generation of vehicles which have the potential to get us where we want to go. Batteries, hybrids, range extenders, take your pick. They all use clean energy as a power source. They're fun to drive, cheap to run, and in most cases, look cool. People actually adapt to the range very quickly. And if, if you actually notice, the range available for the battery electric vehicles now are more than adequate for 95% of people's journeys. So what people are seeing today are real cars, they've got four wheels, they have four seats, that the batteries aren't cramped in the boot of the cars, um, and they'll get, to what, get the opportunity to drive them. And I think that's the biggest thing for consumers. Once they've driven it, their perceptions will dramatically change. This is by far the most exciting time when it comes to low carbon vehicle technologies. When you got a combination of high fuel prices and stronger pollution and, uh, and fuel economy standards globally, what you're seeing is an explosion of innovation of new low carbon technologies. Electric vehicles, new generation vehicles are here and now. We can see them all around us. But the conference is looking beyond that and looking at some of the issues that face us in 2020, 2030 and indeed beyond. Uh, and that's where a really integrated approach between not only the vehicle manufacturers but the fuel suppliers, energy providers, that's really the key going forward. The great thing is dead quiet. It's no different from driving another car in terms of actually handling it, although the acceleration definitely feels different. It certainly accelerates much more smoothly than a normal petrol vehicle. It feels like a big proper car. It drives as lightly as something quite a bit smaller than this. Oh, I'd love to have this as my own car. No question about it at all. London's installing a grid of electric car charging points across the capital. It's set to happen right across the country as well. When the first cars appeared, the first petrol stations soon followed. It's the same with this new technology. It'll cost millions, but the government and key players are right behind it. Britain needs to grab this moment and take its place as a major world player in the new technology. We can take our know-how to other countries. New businesses can grow and that means jobs. We had one of the biggest car manufacturing industries in the world not so long ago. This could be a fresh dawn for many new businesses to grow as the demand for new, clean, green vehicles picks up. There is an enormous challenge before us in terms of decarbonising transport. The technology is there, but at the moment it's too expensive, it's not sufficiently attractive to consumers, and we've got to work on the incentives to, and, and, and bringing down the costs to, to bring that new technology to market more quickly. 
Oil gave us immense freedom to travel. It changed our lives beyond all recognition. And the low-carbon revolution is about protecting that personal liberty while safeguarding the planet. It's about working together to make sure we have a consistently reliable and clean transport future. And here's the thing. For the car, this is, without doubt, the most exciting time ever.